Brother lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We have done it. Job done. It is completed. Arsenal 3, Bournemouth 2. What a game. What a game of football. Look, this one was the hardest we've played at the Emirates Stadium this season. Difficult game. Difficult fixture. What a game by... Look... Let's give a lot of credit to Bournemouth. This game, they deserved something. Let me dive into my reaction. Half time, full time, but Arsenal have won it. And we are five points back onto the table. After Manchester City winning two goals still against Newcastle, Arsenal nearly, nearly lost points against Bournemouth. But look, um, this is not the game where we drop points. This is not the weekend where we go two points clear we are still five points clear on the table i want your reactions i want your thoughts i want your opinions who has your man of the match in this game because that's where we've got to start Riz nelson must be man of the match in this game tell you what he comes on he makes an assist he scores a late night winner a late late minute winner Look, he's man of the match for me. He's really, really man of the match. But let me know who was your man of the match. Alexander Zichenko played very well um, in this game. Rhys Nelson, of course, impacted the game very, very much. I thought Fabio Vieira was good um, as well. And Martin Odegaard as well uh, was very, very good. Um, I think White, White coming on to score that goal is a crucial goal, all right? It's a very, very crucial goal. So let me know in the comment box below who was your man of the match, who, which player actually stood out for you but there are so many options right now there are very very many options and i'm flying and i'm absolutely buzzing hit the like button for me subscribe to the podcast as well let's get this video to 300 likes right so let's dive into it now to be honest i didn't expect bournemouth to come at the emory stadium and put in that performance. I thought they were going to come, uh, you know, at the Emirates, lie down, just like Everton did. And, and they did lie down. They played a very primitive formation, 5-4-1. That is the worst formation I've ever seen in my life. Like, literally, they are, they are FIFA, right? Because that's what FIFA do. They play uh, two, two centre-backs, then they play two midfielders, and a whole... Uh, lot of uh, a, lo a whole lot of strikers, but what Ma you know what Martin O'Neill did? He played five at the back, four in midfield and one in front. Dominic Slacker being the only uh, striker on the pitch, and I thought his game plan actually did stick together. But to be look, that early goal really cost us, and it's the reason as why we're having such a much reaction. It's the reason as to why Arsenal had to win the game. In the 90th minute, because look, we've we've beaten Everton comfortably 4-0. This game, we come into this game in a very good position, and everyone thinks us not gonna win this game. Maybe uh, you know, 4-0. I predicted 7-0, but I wasn't the wrong one. I don't remember any of you in the comment section saying, Kosi, we win this game 3-2. You're telling me 4-1, 3-1, um, you know, 4-2. And I was very far away. I said 7-0. I was very, very far away from, rea from reali reality. So they come at the Emirates Stadium. They grab an early goal seconds. In seconds, they are, they are a goal up. I think it was 11 seconds or 19 seconds uh, around there. Bournemouth are a goal up. And to, uh, and to be honest... We cannot be that club. Arsenal need to stop all this business of, you know, we concede fast and then we win the game later. We cannot do that. We need to start games better. We need to be the club that runs the show right from minute one to minute 90. If that was Newcastle, you don't win that game. If that was Man United, probably you don't win that game. If that was Manchester City, uh, it's, it's game over, all right? But you've, you've got to give a lot of credit to Bournemouth. Now, when they find that goal... Then they, sh they sit in shape for 45 minutes. Arsenal played real quality football uh, in the first half. A lot of passing combinations going on. A lot of passing going on. A lot of, you know, breaking through, through, through the lines going on. But we never found a way through, right? And that was their game plan. Score and have something to protect and then, uh, you, know, sit in, you know, sit in that back four. I think the second goal, in my opinion, actually is the reason as to why Bournemouth lost that game if they only score one they win the game because they know we have one goal to protect we have we have we have nothing to lose in this game right we have everything to lose but not nothing to lose but the moment they get the second goal in my opinion arsenal brought in the game and we'll be talking about that later right so that first half 
Arsenal struggled. We tried to do everything. Leandro Trossard coming off injured. Um, it was a disaster. It was a pure disaster. And when I looked at the at, at half time, I said we might lose this game. We might actually draw this game. And I couldn't believe. I, I couldn't feel the thought of Arsenal losing that game. I couldn't even believe it that I'm thinking about Arsenal losing the game. Tell you what, in the second minute, in the second half, 59 minutes in, Senesi heads home. That is poor defending. We've got to talk about it. That is very, very poor defending. You can't be defending like that. Um, they head home, two goals to nail, and the atmosphere, uh, atmosphere comes down. You feel like it is over. You feel like Arsenal are nowhere, nowhere near coming back in this game. But what a game. What a result. This is one of the games I've looked at. And I'm, I will always look back when we, when we win the title. And I say, we were real champions. I've seen Liverpool, when they won the title, they won in, in, the sim, in a similar way. They won that game in a similar way. Was it Norwich? Was it Bournemouth? Uh, was it Aston Villa? Was it Southampton? I don't even remember. But Sadio Mane scored a very let go. And they won it. That is the true character uh, of champions okay so the second half was where the action actually happened um three goals coming in i'm gonna be breaking through the goals and individual performance as well okay so the first goal which i think is very very crucial for us it is very crucial for us because uh the response was always gonna be needed okay if we if, if we if, if we let ourselves down um and feel like this game is gone we, we are looking on to the next one that was a wrong move and the right move was always look at Bromouth. They have gotten a second goal. They're in a much better position. They're going to relax a little bit. And that is how we have beaten them. I tell you, if they had scored one goal, that game is gone. Arsenal lose that game. If they didn't score a second goal, Arsenal lose that game. But when they score, uh, when, when they score a second, look at Emil Smith Rowe with the, for the first goal, having a free header in the penalty area, and Thomas Party tapping home. And challenged. We have two player, two Arsenal players in the penalty area and challenged. All right. Um, Emil Smith Rowe heading the ball back to what goal, you know, goal wides, and then Thomas Partey tapping in. Like that was so easy. That is not the Bournemouth that I defended um, for 70 minutes. Okay. Then he brings on Rhys Nelson. And I thought that was a very good substitution. Ben White and Rhys Nelson, very good substitutions. I like Tomiyasu, and I thought Tomiyasu didn't have a problem today. Uh, not at all, because even the second goal um, came in when, when he was already off the pitch. But what I liked about Benjamin White this time is he was making runs inside the penalt area. He was affect affecting the penalt area more than Tomiyasu was um, in the first half. So he brings on, uh, on uh, Rhys Nelson. Takes off Emil Smith Rowe because Smith Rowe, uh, although he gets an assist in this game, by the way, but he was not affecting the game on the left hand side like a player like uh, Rich Nelson did or um, as Gabriel Lesses would have done if he was in this game. So he brings on Rich Nelson, and that ball is what we were looking for. That is the kind of service into the penalty area. That's the kind of delivery we were lacking in that game. Because look, I was looking at Odegaard, I was looking at Saka uh, and Alexander Zchenko. They're trying to go high. They're trying to hit that ball, uh, you know, almost for the header. You do not have a player who is heading the ball. Why are you heading the ball, hitting the ball for the header? And when Rich Nelson comes into that game, it's all, it, it all changes. He starts hitting the ball, um, you know, like low. Right, those low crosses, and one of them falls onto the foot of Benjamin White, hits it with absolute precision, and then we are 2 2. It is level. And you know, when, when it's 2 2, I think that's where Bournemouth actually got confused. They thought we have given it out, we've given it, we've given it away. A point is not enough, okay? And I think that is where they lost it. That, that's where they lost it. After scoring the second goal, they feel like we're going through. We are going home with three points. And after then, th then after um, you know, conceding one, they want to sit back. They want to defend. When Arsenal get a second one, because they're a little bit relaxed now and they're no longer uh, you know as as strict as they have been, they consider second one. Now they're caught. You know, they're caught in between two two thoughts. Do we win the game? Or do we sit back and grab a point? The right thought would have been sit back uh, and grab a point. But they wanted another goal. They wanted to. They kept on pushing. 
actually after the second goal, uh, Arsenal lost a little bit of possession, right? We lost a little bit of possession. They had possession. They tried to score a third. It didn't come. But what a way to win it. What a way to score your third goal um, in a game. Rhys Nelson, that was a belter. That was an absolute, absolute belter. Because, look, it is, it, time is running up. He has one shot. It is one shot to go. I like the way he controls it. I like the way he puts it down and then hits it with absolute power, absolute precision into the back. Like he rifles it. He, he rifles it into the, in, into, the top, into the corner. And Neto has nothing to do. The, game, the, the time-wasting merchants have lost 3-2 at Arsenal. That is good. That was very, very good. I even don't have the right words to do my reaction because I feel very happy. I feel very, very happy. I've not been happy this, uh, like this year in this way. Like, that is good. That is a statement victory. And all clubs that win titles, and that, that, that's why I'm, I always say that um, <clears throat> Arsenal are champions. All clubs that win titles have these games. Like, you're expected to win. But then you do not win. Just imagine if Manchester City had won that Nottingham Forest game uh, later in the game. Everyone would have said, City are champions. This is experience doing it. Everything. But for us, it is character. It is resilience. It is passion. It is everything put together. Kongs Arsenal. Kongs to the boys. They've actually done it. Now, in terms of individual performances, Rich Nelson is the first guy to talk about uh, in this game. What an impact. He's actually two, had two games that he's come in and has, uh, and has had a, a massive impact. Game number one was the um, uh, Nottingham Forest game where Saka got injured right in the first half. Came in that game, assisted and scored. Uh, I, I think he scored twice, was, didn't he? Uh, when he scored five. Um, and then in this game... He might go down as one of the most important players in our path to victory. He might go down as one of the most important players in our path to victory. That is a performance from a substitute. Like, that is the right mindset. That is the right character. He comes on. He's bobbing forward. He's creating all these chances. Uh, he's trying to score. And when he comes in... The left-hand side is working. The right-hand side was always working throughout the game from, uh, through Saka... It is now it now becomes a real game, right? It now becomes a game for them to track, right? They, they, they were only tracking the right hand side. The left hand side was not actually working very well because Trossard uh, comes off uh, injured. But when you bring on a Mill Smith Pro and then you bring on Rhys Nelson, you're literally making them work. Now the other player that I loved a lot in this game was Martin Odegaard. What a performance uh, from my from my captain and what a game. Again, he has had. Now, this is not a game where he scored, but it's a game where he's taken full responsibility. He's taken all matters in his own hands and said, look, if, I, if you're going to score, I'm going to be the guy that, you know, scores for my team. If you're going to make an assist, I'm going to be the guy that plays that ball. And although he has not actually, you know, had maybe an assist, has he had an assist in that game? No, uh, he has not. He's not had an assist. Um, he's not even scored. But that is a captain's performance. That is a real captain's performance. You don't give up. You literally don't give up. He was trying to make things happen, running into the penalty area, shooting all the time, you know, sitting players down, taking free kicks, bringing in corners, joining up with soccer in, in, in corner situations. That is what you want from your captain. And I was talking to one of the Liverpool fans late, uh, earlier on late in the season and was telling me that Jaden Anderson doesn't deserve to be a captain. Why is he captain? He doesn't even start, you know, step up um, to give us those real moments as a captain should. And Odegaard literally did that in that game. Thomas Partey also had a very good game. The goal was very, very good. What was he doing in that area? Thomas Partey is always um, outside the penalty area, uh, waiting for that ball to uh, come out and then maybe have a shot or have a goal or something. But this time, he is in the penalty area and he's unmarked. No one expects him to be there. And he hits it home. He had a very, very good game. I don't think, I don't think they had any midfield, uh, pro, you know, joy. Bournemouth. They didn't have any midfield joy. All they were doing was sit back, hit it long, 
sit back, hit it now. Boring football, like bogus, bogus football. So Thomas Partey, I, I like the way um, he played in this game. It was purely, purely very, very good. Uh, and then Alexander Zichenko. Let's give it to Alexander Zichenko. Um, I say that in such games, White, Zichenko and Tomiyasu are always very key. Because you have four midfielders... Um, which are always actually five because Dominic, Dominic Solanke was always dropping in, in in for them as a midfielder. So you have five midfielders to challenge and you, we lined up with a three, a four, three, three. So we have three midfielders. So Zichenko then tucks into midfield. Tomiyasu or Ben White then tuck into midfield to make it a five V five. Okay. Remember they're playing five at the back. For you to break them down, you need to have a very intelligent central midfielder. And and for me, that is what I saw from Fabio Vieira um and 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 Alexander Zichenko. So Vieira is the other player that I loved um in this game, played very well. The confidence was there as well. But tell you what, guys, that is a performance of a champion. That is if we don't win this title, it will hurt. It will really, really hurt because We've done everything we are supposed to do, right? We've beaten Liverpool, we've beaten Man, Man United, we've beaten Tottenham Hotspur, we've beaten Chelsea, we've won games in the 90th minute, two games in the 90th minute. We deserve to be champions. We deserve to win the title. Let me know if you're happy. Let me know if you are impressed with the performance. And I'll speak to you right in the player ratings and the six things we learned later on. See you soon.